Hey everyone, my name is Mars, like the planet, and this is Housewarming. Me and my partner have just purchased our very first home, so if you're interested in design, homemaking, and figuring it all out, make sure you subscribe. I have posted a few plant videos on this channel, and I absolutely love sharing all of the plants that I have in my care. But this is only a part of the story. I have killed a lot of plants. I've been interested in house plants for maybe the last five years or so, and I've killed a ton of plants and nothing is wrong with that. But I just want to share with you a list of plants that I've personally killed and I refuse to keep in my care. I only have two that are currently on their way out of the door because they keep dying. I cannot figure it out. I'm a person that loves plants that are super low maintenance, do not lean a lot of humidity and do not need a lot of care and attention. I'm a person that's just going to throw it in front of a window, give it enough water and then that's it. All of these plants I was told that are super beginner friendly, but just did not work for me. So let's get into the list. Diffenbachia is the first plant that I cannot keep alive. I've had a couple of plants in my past and I just keep killing them. Diffenbachia is a fast growing plant that can grow up to two feet given the right amount of light. The plant is also called the dumb cane because it is very toxic to plants and makes you talk dumb. But this is a phrase that is really kind of being phased out because it is a derogatory term. Diffenbachia is best grown as an indoor plant in bright indirect sunlight and you should plant it in fertile well-drained soil with a high peat content. As it is a tropical plant it is best grown in high humidity. Overwatering and underwatering your plant can turn the leaves yellow and the leaves also turn yellow because the plant is lacking in nutrients such as nitrogen. Now that is the exact thing that happened to my plant. I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. The leaves were all turning yellow. They were all drooping. They were all falling off. I tried to cut back on the water. I tried to give it nutrients. I tried to give it more sun. I tried, And the leaves just kept falling off. I'm not saying once again with any of these plants on this list to not buy them, but I do want to express caution that they were really hard for me to keep alive. Now I just lost my Monstera plant. I just had to throw it away. If you looked at my last plant tour, you would see that I have a very small Monstera plant, but it got thrips and it died. Monstera are also known as a split leaf philodendron and they are native to the central rainforest of South America. They are easy to grow and they are climbing evergreen and they are super, super popular right now. Monsters prefer bright, indirect sunlight and regular water. My plant died, like I said, because it had thrips and I really tried to save it. Because thrips are so tiny, they can be difficult to see infestations until they become super, super large and they are killing the plant. I use neem oil in a spray bottle to try to fix the situation and neem oil is a natural substance derived from the neem tree and it is an effective natural insecticide to help kill bugs off of house plants. But it seems like it was just too late. I kept spraying it and I kept just seeing tiny little white bugs all over the leaves. You will know that you have an infestation of thrips if the leaves just slowly start to die. They will turn yellow no matter how much water you're giving it or how much light you're giving it. The thrips are literally just sucking the life out of the plant. So I use a spray bottle mixed with water and neem oil that I got from Home Depot and I sprayed the plant. I took it outside. I made sure it was dripping wet. Now this should be an effective way to save a plant, but it was just far too gone. I also tried to take some of the cuttings and root them in water, but it seems like the plant was too weak. Now there is a silver lining. I just picked up a brand new Monstera that is almost four times the size of the plant that I had originally. So I'm hoping that it does not get thrips and I will make sure to stay on it and continue to spray this one because I really don't want to lose it. Dracaena is the next plant that I have in my care that it's just dying. I found it for $10 at a farmer's market and the leaves are always crispy. They're always yellow. I have tried to adjust the watering, the lighting, the type of water and it's still just dying. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I read that these plants were super easy to take care of for beginners, that they didn't need a lot of water, that they didn't need a lot of light, but mine keeps getting brown leaves. I have given it more light, I've given it less light, and I've checked it for pests. I've also given it filter water and it still has brown leaves. So if you can give me any suggestions or any hints about any of these plants, make sure you leave them down in the comments below because I would like to try again, but I really don't like finicky plants. I have heard that sometimes some Dracaenas prefer filtered water and that's kind of just, that's way too much hassle for me, honestly, but I do not know if that's the issue because it's still producing brown leaves. The next plant I keep killing are spider plants. These plants are perfect for the less ideal growing conditions and the leaves can be green or striped green and white. 
The mature plants regularly send out long stems that look like little spiders hanging off the ends and you can take those, pot those up and grow an entirely new plant. These plants have been around for a really long time. They were super popular in the 70s and the 80s, but the plants are sensitive to fluoride and chlorine in the water. So if it's possible, you should use rainwater or distilled water for these plants. I did not do well with these plants because I did not realize that they needed filtered water or rainwater and it was honestly too late. I bought a very big, huge spider plant from Lowe's and I was in love with it and I gave it sink water just like I do all of my plants and it just got super round tips. It started to die and I think back in the day, I used to buy these big, huge plants and try to chop them up and repot them into a bunch of little plants. I thought I was saving money by buying a big plant and making like four little plants out of it. But I think I really just roughed up the roots too much. I think that I was just rough handling it way too much and then repotting it and I wasn't giving it the nutrients it needed and I was giving it tap water. So it was honestly just a recipe for disaster. I would honestly like to try again with a spider plant now that I know that it needs filter water. But like I said, I'm very hesitant to have plants that are on a specialty type of diet, honestly. I love to just throw all of my plants in the sink and hose them down and not have to worry about it. The next plant is a Rex begonia or it's sometimes called a painted leaf begonia or a fancy leaf begonia. These plants are known for their variegated leaves and they frequently have large up to six inches long that are brightly colored and in various shades of green, red, silver, even purple. It can be challenging to find the right conditions for a Rex begonia because the leaves are super temperamental. Ideal temperature should be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit and nighttime temperature should not be below 60 degrees Fahrenheit and they should have a constant humidity level of 50%. You should provide the plant with plenty of indirect sunlight and keep it out of direct sunlight. Now when I got this plant, I was just dumb. Like I did not understand what house plants needed. I was just like sunlight, water, you're good. Honestly, when I first started out with houseplants, I just didn't understand what I was doing. So I had it in a completely dark room. I had a fan blowing on it. So yes, that was my bad. I really kind of, looking back, I really didn't know what I was doing, but that's okay. I have learned, I have watched things on the internet to make sure I know what I'm doing. Would I get a begonia again? Probably not. I mean, sorry, but I do not like the way the leaves look. I think that they come in beautiful colors, but I don't know. To me, I hate to say this and please don't come after me, but I just think they kind of just look like colorful weeds. I don't like the spiky leaf shape. I don't know. It's just not my thing. I'm much more of a philodendron pothos type of girl, but please don't come after me in the comments. I'm sorry. <laughs> The next plant I have is a parlor palm and this one is still in my care and if you just saw my last houseplant tour, this was a brand new plant to me so it hasn't even been that long. The parlor palm has long been used as an indoor plant. This is a lovely plant with deep green foliage and has been discovered in Central America and brought back to the United States where it immediately became a popular indoor palm. The parlor palm is one of the most popular indoor palms grown in the most temperate countries. It's favored because it adapts to relatively low light and handles lower temperatures. Among all of the palm trees, parlor palms are a great place to start for beginners. Because they are tolerant to low light and sensitive to too much water, they are prime candidates to almost be loved to death. And being loved to death can mean that it is either getting over water or it's getting too much light. Now, maybe I did this. The week after I got home, I put it in a nice spot, I watered it, and she just never bounced back. The leaves started drooping, they started getting crispy, they started getting brown, the plant does not stand up. I have tried all over the house to give it a nice spot to live. I've given it low light, I've given it high light. I made sure that I didn't overwater it because they said do not overwater it so I tried to let it dry out but the longer and longer I let it dry out the more the leaves just started to droop and I really don't know what I'm doing wrong. Every place that I look up just says don't give it too much water, don't give it too much light but that seems to be the thing that's killing it so I'm just not sure. If you can help me, once again, please put it in the comments down below. I would love to revive my parlor palm. Like I said, I still have it and she's kind of thriving but I really think she's on her way out. Once again, I only had this plant for maybe a month or so and it's already dying. The prayer plant is the next plant that I killed and I absolutely loved my plant and I knew that they were hard to take care of when I got it. I found it for like $5 at Walmart and I was so happy. I was going to take care of it. I knew what I was doing and it just completely died back. The prayer plant is actually named for an Italian physicist whose last name is Maranta and he was a botanist during the 16th century. And the Maranta genus includes a dozen of low growing plants native to Brazil. Among them is the prayer plant. 
It gets its common name from the fact that the leaves stay flat during the day and then fold up like prayer hands during the night. Prayer plants are low growing and spreading plants that thrive best when provided with greenhouse like conditions, including warm, moist, gentle airflow and plenty of fertilizer. Now, like I said, I love this plant and it was producing growth. It was doing great. It was in front of a south facing window. I was giving it water. We were all good. We were all together. And then the plant started to die. And I heard that this was common and I just didn't want to panic. So I was like, okay, girl, I see you back in temperamental. I know you're going to come back but it never grew back. I tried to pop some of the little leaves out to grow roots and it started growing roots. I was like, okay, okay, I'm bringing it back. And then it still did not come back. And so I was just like, oh gosh, did I really kill this plant? And once again, I tried to give it time. I tried to give it time to, you know, go dormant or break dormancy and grow back, but it just was not happening. Once again, I would love to try again with a prayer plant, but if they're just known to die, then I don't really think I want to get another one. April Miliad was one of the first plants that I ever got. My partner actually used to work at Lowe's in the garden section. So this was kind of how I found my love for house plants. Bromeliads are more commonly known as earth stars due to their rosette shaped arrangement of leaves and their low growth habit. They are beautiful and incredibly varied plants native to Brazil. The different types of varieties need different levels of light, but most plants within this genus relatively thrive within some sort of indirect sunlight or light shade. They also thrive in tropical conditions, so you should make efforts to keep them pretty moist and a lot of humidity. Now, like I said, this was one of the first plants that I ever got, so I was just kind of dumb. I did not un understand how to to take care of a plant i knew light i knew water and it was growing but then at some point it just stopped like i said i looked it up and it said it was supposed to remain moist but it seemed like it just got root rot and died it even had a little pup you know growing out of the side but once i dug the whole thing up and tried to repot it it was just all mush all of the roots and everything were all brown and soggy and I just didn't understand what I did wrong. I haven't had a bromeliad in my care since then. So I really don't know if like I was just watering it way too much. I just didn't know how to revive it. I'm just not sure. But once again, I have heard that they are super easy plants to care for. And I also see them at big box stores all the time. But it's just a little warning. The last plant that I continue to kill and I probably will not buy again is the diva herself, the Fatonia. Normally grown as a potted house plant, the nerve plant, also known as a Fatonia, is a spreading evergreen perennial with delicately veined leaves and deep green leaves. They also come in white, they come in pink, they come in red, and they are also found at a lot of big box stores. And as beautiful as it is, Fatonias are somewhat temperamental. They are tricky to grow as a house plant and require high constant humidity, like a terrarium or something like that, and they cannot tolerate stagnant conditions. And the nerve plant is also sensitive to strong direct light and can quickly suffer from leaf burn. This plant is a diva, capital D-I-V-A. They will flop over within a matter of hours and immediately need water. A lot of people have been showing this plant around TikTok and Instagram being like, oh, this is a plant. If you love to water it, you know, it'll show you exactly what you need. And they show these time-lapse videos of their Fatonias flopping over and then they give them water and they spring right back up. And people think that's just so cool and want to get these plants but it is super hard to take care of honestly i've had three fetonias and they all end up dying because i guess they just don't get enough water i have had a plant that i had to water every single day because every morning when i woke up it was completely flopped over and honestly it was more flopped over than it was upright now i get it if you love to spoil your plant if you love a plant that you can water every single day day and night sure but at least, like, at least give me, give me something. Like, I just don't understand how these plants are so popular because every time I get one, it's flopped over every single time I look at it. So that's something I will probably never get a Fatonia again. I love them. I love the leaf structure, but it just requires way too much maintenance. She is way too much of a diva. So that does it for my video. That is a list of all of the houseplants that I have killed. If you've killed a houseplant, there is no need to worry. We have all done it. And I just wanted to share to show you that I'm human. Even though I have all of these plants, these are the ones that I can take care of. There are a lot of plants that I have killed. And trust me, that's okay. We're all learning out here. We're all just trying to figure it out. If you have any plants that you've killed or you have questions on, leave a comment down below. Honestly, it's always a mixture of sunlight, humidity, water, and just the right conditions that you are trying to tweak and trying to get right. And sometimes your home doesn't have those conditions for the plant. A lot of times we think we can turn our house into this greenhouse and every single plant we bring in is going to thrive and love it, but that's simply just not the case. But I post new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys next week. Bye!